Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use Espresso to test the UI of your Android app. Espresso is a framework that um, allows you to test UI without actually having to have your application up and running on an emulator or a device. It's very fast testing. It can allow you to test whether items on your UI are laid out properly. It can, can interact with buttons. It can send data in and out. It's a very nice test role. If you've worked with Selenium, it's similar to Selenium. If you have it, um, work with Selenium, that's okay. But imagine that you're able to control each one of these buttons without actually using your mouse and clicking on them. All right, so Espresso sets up like this. We're going to either look for items in the view with some type of matcher, and we can match with a variety of properties like has text, has value, has sibling, um, and then do some type of perform action on or check assertion. Same is true with data. I can search through my data, like if I read from a database, and do a perform a view action or a check action, or since these are lambdas, I can just, you know, chain them together. So we're going to get Android Studio's Gradle set up to support Espresso, and then we're going to write two Espresso tests. So I'm going to go back to Android Studio. Oops, wrong one. took longer to shift. Okay, so Android Studio already comes with a couple of tests. Um, you can only have one test per package, which is weird, so I'm going to add a new package. I'm going to right-click the Java new package. There it is. Give it a name. I'll actually give it a location. That's folder's fine. I'm going to call it Espresso. And I'm going to add a new Java class to this. I'm going to call it Espresso Test. And we get this document. So now we have the test, but now we need to modify Android to understand this. So to do so, you need to go down to your Gradle app. So you want to find build.gradle for your app. Notice the dot app. So I'm going to edit this file, and we're going to look for a couple of items. First thing we want to look for, make sure that this is here, Android X test runner, Android J unit runner is there. If it's not there, we're not running any test, but this comes by default. I've not seen it not there for a long time. Next, we need to add some dependencies. Make sure that this one's in, or whatever the most recent version is, and then I'm going to add two more. One point four Pro is the current version. You might have something newer. Um, please make sure it's Android X, Test Runner, and I'm also going to do Test Rules. All right. So with this in, um, now that you've upgraded Gradle, you need to tell Android Studio that Gradle's changed. So you come up and click this cat-looking thing up here. And this will download the appropriate files you need. Now, if you make a mistake in this, it's not going to tell you until it becomes a problem later on. Like, if you spell Android instead of Android X, your test will just die. And it'll say, I can't find something in here. So you just make sure you spell this correctly. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my Espresso test in Java. I need a whole bunch of imports. And I've already written them. So I'm just copying them over just to save some time. Pause the screen, take a look at all those. And now I'm going to use those. Let's start with a couple of annotations. So I'm running with Android JUnit 4. JUnit 4 is important here because this is defaulted JUnit 4. You can spend some time and jump to JUnit 5, but I don't know that it's worth it. I'm going to create a large test. You can also do medium tests and small tests. Well, go big, go home, right? Okay, so I'm going to create a rule. The rule is going to allow me to connect to the Android app. I'm not really going to use it in this test, but it has some functionality that you can look up later.
essentially connects activity rule to the to the main activity class. Um, you can connect to any one of your activities over here. Um, you can have multiple things in this rule. This sum works kind of like the before commands in JUnit that allows me to set stuff up prior. Um, now I'm going to write a trivial test, and this trivial test is going to verify that the word number is to the left of this text box, or this text edit screen. It is relatively trivial, but it's always important to know that you know, your stuff is lined up correctly. So, the current rule of thumb for naming your tests is to name them what they do. So I'm checking that number is displayed beside edit box. If this fails, I'll get a message on the screen that says it fails. Looking back at this screen, the cheat sheet, I need to do an on view. View match will find the object on the screen, and then I'll do some type of object or association on that. I either perform something on it or I'll check something on it. I'm going to do two checks in this first one. Okay. So I'm going to look for anything with text, saying the word number. I'm going to do a check. And I'm short way, too many parentheses. Why is matches angry? What am I missing? I see what I'm doing. It's not matches dot matches the function except the parameter. Except the parameter. All right, so now it's happy. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm checking to make sure that number is left of this object. So make sure first it's displayed. That's what this is saying. Check to make sure it's displayed. Second one is check to make sure it's to the left. So I'm gonna again look at the number. And I'm going to do dot check again. And I'm going to use instead of matches, I'm going to use is completely to the left of. So you completely displayed. You can look at there's a lot of choices here. Okay, so it doesn't like his complete left of, must have missed an imports. Yep, I missed an imports. Why don't you like R? Alright, I forgot to import it. Rookie mistake. No, I spelled edit number items wrong because R didn't drop. Now it's happy. Okay, so is it on the screen? Is it to the left? Let's run this test. You can right click, you can run it over here. And this will test your UI without your UI actually running. Now I happen to have mine running in the Android um, emulator, but it doesn't have to. And now it's happy. Okay, let's do another one, hopefully with fewer errors. Um, this one to see if my math is right. Now, in a previous video, I tested 
my functions and stats that does the math for me. Now I'm going to check to see if it works correctly on the screen. So I know my code stats is correct because I wrote tests to do that. So now I need to test to see if it works in my in interface. And I'm going to check to see if permutation with no repetition is correct. So what I need to do is I need to send items in. If I use the number 5 for the number of, of items to pull for up and 3 for the repetitions, um, I should get 125 as a count back. So basically what I'm saying is, if I run this, oops, not there. If I run the app and I do 5 and 3, I should get back 125 as a number. So what I have to do is I have to first put the data in there. So it says find edit num items, put five in the box. And do the same thing for the number reps. The number of repetitions we have. And again, I'm going to do the same perform. Um, you saw that there's a whole bunch of actions there. Click, drag, swipe. A lot of things you can do with that few actions. So now I'm going to click something. Now I noticed the last two I didn't have to put in view matchers. It just works without it because I imported it. Button perm rep. Pretty sure there should be no rep. Yeah. Click as a function. So this should click the button. I should get back 125. Now I'm using everything as strings here. It's because Android Studio treats everything in the screen as a string. Um, if you need to convert it, you can. So I'm going to do the same thing. Text response. This is going to check to make sure the right word there is there. Oops, I see what I'm doing wrong. I've got the wrong test up here. I got confused. I named my test wrong. Now I'm filling my screen from the strings file. But I want to make sure it says the right word when I click the button. That's what that's checking to make sure the right word is there. Now I'm gonna check the number. All right, so I'm checking my permutation with the repetition button. If I send in 5 and 3, I should get 125 back. Let's find out. So 
So my first test passes, no, it's checking permutations of the rep. Uh oh, that one failed. If I click on it, I get a bunch of vomit. If I scroll up, I see it's one there. Was one. So I get the wrong answer back. So let's figure out what I did wrong. First off, let me make sure that I didn't do something stupid in my test. I'm going to run it here and physically repeat that. Just because your test says you're bad doesn't mean you're bad. Maybe that you wrote the test bad. So I'm running my emulator. So I do 15, what was it? I'm sorry, 5 and 3, right? 5, 3, I'm getting one back, so something's wrong with my code because it works both doesn't work both here and in the test. So let's figure out what he did wrong. So what he did wrong isn't here because this is the right number I'm supposed to get back. So something's wrong with my button. So let's go to my first fragment. Let's go look at it. So when I click on the button. I send in the string permutation to repetition. That one passes, so I'm good. Strip numbers appears. I create a new variable called stats. Now I know the permutation with repetition, this function already works because I tested it with my unit test earlier. So I need to figure out which one of these lines it dies on. So let's do some debugging and I scroll up. Let's look at start with strip. So what I've got is if I notice here my variable repeats is wrong. It's not used. Count is supposed to be the answer. Repeats is the number of times I repeat the, the pull. So when I come back down and look here, you see that I'm passing in repeats here. Since repeat is not set at zero, and it gives me an error. So I'm going to put repeats here. Save. And now let's run this test again. Let it chug. Now, some people disable tests once they pass. I don't, because what if you do something stupid and that moves around? Um, okay, look at that. I passed this time. So I found my glitch. All right, so what we learned in this video was that we can use Espresso to test the UI of your program with or without an actual device present. Now, it is good practice to learn how to write an instrumented test that will allow you to test it on a specific device, um, but this definitely will let you know if your UI is working fine. All right, thank you. Um, thank you for watching. Be safe and good luck.